three, two, one. Hello, my friends, my little YouTube friends. Welcome back to my channel. You guys asked what the f do I put on my skin before I jump onto the camera. And I am guilty of this. I am truly guilty of this, where I do my skin prep off camera. And look, I did an oopsie and I put on my lip ointment, but I wanna show you guys something that I put on a long time ago. It's the face tapes, how I moisturize my face, how I prep it, and then pop my little plastic surgery contraptions on. As you guys can see, I do not have them on. They go afterwards, and how I properly adhere, adhese, adhere, glue, put, tape, whatever it is on my face. Now, these tapes, again, are not for everyday use. I just use them when I'm doing my makeup because it gives me more room to play and it's more of a cut, cut, kitty cat look and I like it more. If you plan on wearing this to a five hour event, good luck to you. I suggest you throw in a couple of Excedrins in your bag. Um, a lot of people have been saying like, yeah, I wore it, I couldn't take it and I took it off. No shit, Sherlock. These are for photo shoots or if you're gonna have them for an hour or two. Unless you're me and you can take it, like I'm just so used to being uncomfortable, I can leave them on for a long time and forget about them because like I'm just always used to having a headache 24 seven. That aside, I also wanna talk about another brand today. I have talked about it in the past many, many, many times. It's called Tula Beauty. Why this brand stood out to me and why I talked about it then and why I will continue talking about it, it was created by a gastroenterologist. I'm not gonna throw shade at anyone. Some things are good, some things are bad, but like people have approached me to do like a skincare line too and it's like, I get it, I have good skin, and if I were to formulate something that's already not on the market, sure. I really appreciate doctor-owned brands because they really, really, really know what their shit is about because they formulate it themselves. In Armenian, Tula means like, I don't know, like dog or like, I don't know how to translate that word. There's so many words in Armenians that don't exist in the English language. Okay, anyways, if you guys know it, comment down below, but Tula is an all clean, brand. Dr. Raj is a probiotic expert. She noticed that her patients not only felt good on probiotics, but their skin also ended up looking great, which is a great side effect. Honestly, you guys, if you don't know what probiotics is, a lot of people, like I know some of you guys will come for me for skin and be like, it's topical, it's topical, it's topical. I think it's like not 50-50, but a lot of it has to do with what you're eating, your diet, like are you taking probiotics? I do the bio -K, the milk. I'm gonna put it over here. That one, I like drink it. It's really important for your gut health to be good because your gut is kind of like the core of everything. I can't explain it. I didn't know that until I had gut issues. And when doctors started explaining it to me, I was like, oh, I understand now. So that's why this brand stood out to me because I mean, who would have thought? 100% of these products are formulated with probiotics and superfoods. Also, another thing a lot of you guys got on top of me for is to only promote cruelty-free makeup. Tula is cruelty-free and never tested on animals, just on humans. I introduced you to these contraptions to these contraptions a while ago. It was actually, I think, the first or second video I've ever posted on YouTube. I'll link it over here. That was like my best, I don't know, impression of showing you guys how to use it for some reason. Today I decided that I would give you guys what you guys want because remember I asked you guys to act like producers and y'all did. A lot of you guys kept asking me what do I use on my skin for I do makeup or how I put the tapes on because some of you guys the tapes slip and slide you guys aren't like putting it on correctly so I decided to do an updated moment for that too as well so without further ado i'm gonna stop talking because a lot of you guys said that i talk a lot in the beginning well you guys could just forward that part i don't want to see that comment and i'm not going to stop doing that because i'm explaining what i'm going to do so whoever comments that i talk a lot there's a forward button i will not wear spf at night or in front of flash cameras but spf breaks me out like a lunatic. I think I've said it before, SPF is the pimp to my pimples. Tula has an SPF that does not break you out. 
usually SPFs, I don't know if you're like this, but for me, it literally clogs my pores and I have texture or pimples. Comment down below if SPF is the pimp to your pimples. So if you guys don't know, this is what it looks like. It's called Protect and Glow Daily Sunscreen Gel. That's what it looks like and it makes your hand glowy. Like look at that and look at this. Which one would you prefer? if you had to wear sunscreen, obviously the one that's glowing. So a lot of you guys always say like, my skin's really pretty. I have on this SPF all the time. And it looks very glowy. Right now I have absolutely nothing on. All of you guys want a flawless complexion and then don't want to listen to this part. Nobody, let me repeat this. Nobody on this earth, no celebrity, no one out there, not me, not my mama, not my grandma, nobody on God is going to have a flawless complexion without the right skin prep. If you just put on foundation on your face, you're going to look like shit. And that's on Mary Bo Peep. Love. Before I do anything, I always put on, I use a toner. Why use a toner? Because it balances your pH balance. I always force everyone to use toners because I think this is a skip. This is a skip. I just made a board. Step, skip, skip. Commercial dictionary, who would purchase it and actually use the words that I make up accidentally. So this is the Tula Balancing Act Purifying and pH Balancing Toner Pads. So basically it's their toner but it's made with superfoods and probiotics. Probiotics, pH balance. Ding, 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 it's a no-brainer. So basically, what I do is going to be, I don't know why I pat it first, and then what? I feel like I wanna get like the product on it first. And yes, I do my eyelids and my eyebrows. Your eyebrows have skin underneath them, you guys, and you can break out. Trust me, it happens to me all the time if I don't clean them. Now I'll wipe. And what this does, it brings your pH balance to your skin, no matter how clean you think your skin is. Run it through with the toner and I'll tell you the truth. Now I'm gonna get red and stuff a little bit. That's totally fun. And that was on clean skin. My face is washed, I guess not. We are going to let that sit. Did you guys see how it went from red to a regular color? You're gonna let that sit. When you'll know when to move on to the next step when it's not like too tacky, when it's like wet, wet, don't do it because it starts burning your skin. Now we're gonna go on to the beauty sleep. Now I've done this with La Mer before and everyone always like questions my sanity when I do it. For makeup, I actually love using night creams to adhese the makeup. That's been one of like, I feel like everyone's beauty secrets. Like this is a lifetime hack by the way. This is a really, really big, big beauty secret that has been held in Hollywood for a very, very long time. It's night creams for bases, not like primers or anything like that. So their beauty sleep comes in like this. You just pop like that, finger pop. I don't know what to do with myself with these nails. They're really, really long. I don't know who I thought I was, but I was definitely trying it. So this is really thick. I'm gonna warm it up, pat it. Just a heads up, you can get this product at tula.com. Use code Harouche for 15% off. Also, if you're expecting this product to smell amazing, it does not. It is made from superfoods and probiotics, but does it do the job 100%? I'm pressing it in, but you guys didn't think I put on my moisturizers like this. Now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go up and under. I'm gonna take the eye cream. It looks like a little suction thing. It's really cute. Pop it off. Always keep this on. So their under eye situation is a balm. It's not a lotion. So it's kind of like a stick. I want you guys just to look at this, okay? You saw my under eye before. Look at it now. And this I do to every client and to myself. And then pull it to my left line. Look at the difference in the two eyes. This is amazing when you're applying makeup. I haven't used this one for too, too long, but I really, really like it for the times that I have used it. I feel like it goes great with like mixing with concealer. I have noticed a little bit. It like, it's an instant deep puffing thing. I haven't used it long enough to know like the long, long term effects, but I do see how fast it depuffs my under eyes. The last step to everything should be your SPF because it's supposed to sit on top. If you guys didn't know that about skincare, like serums, moisturizers, I 
and then SPF always. I'm gonna only use that much. Now everyone has their own version of how much SPF to use. I use literally like one squirt. I don't like to overdo it because remember I told you I break out from SPF. But like look at how glowy the SPF made me. Why not use an SPF that does something? This helps with headaches too. Your eyelids need SPF too. And I always put it on the back of my hands. We are finished with our skin prep. That is what I do off camera to save a lot of time looking really, really stupid 24 seven while I'm doing it because it's always like a massage moment and then the lip ointment that I have on. Before you buy the tapes too, my face was so slippery, I didn't even. You're gonna have to remove whatever we, the layers that we just put on. Comment down below if you guys like my skin like this. So like when you guys say, your skin is so amazing. Did you guys see how dull it looked before and what skin prep makes your skin look like. This is usually my every single day face. I don't wear makeup a lot. I just do skin prep and I like it like that. So I'm gonna use the toner to remove anything that we just applied, but in the space that I'm going to put on the tapes. And I know so many of you guys are probably like, where can I get them from? I'm gonna link them down below. But I swear if I could design my own tapes, they would be like a whole other story. I've been waiting, wearing them for way too long. A lot of people before I exposed myself that I wear tapes thought that I had my eyes done, but it's just tapes. I feel like no matter how much you do those like eye surgeries, it does not look the same as it does on with tapes at all because tapes is like precision you know exactly how you want to make your eye look there is an art to putting them on you have to sit there and analyze your face first understand the symmetry of your eyes before using this or you're going to look wonk eyed it's more than just knowing you're going to put them on you have to understand like how each eyebrow goes how each eye this one's rounder this one is more almond shaped and smaller this eyebrow is higher this eyebrow is lower this eyebrow is longer, this eyebrow is shorter. So really analyze your face. And I'm going to try to hit it as symmetrical as I can. So this one, I like to elongate my brow. This one, I like to make my eye more almond to match this eye. Get what I'm saying? Okay, my little friends, are you guys ready to learn how to stash your eyes? Do, do, do. Also, can you do this? Hair back, crocodile clip, or anything that you have will do. I don't like putting them too low. I go in, I go in above my ear. That's my ear. I wanna put it right there. What guy do I look like with my hair like this? Like a cartoon character. So we got that secured. You're gonna put the rest of your hair back. You are going to grab, the way you insert them is you're gonna only insert them in the iridescent part. When you order these, do not put the metal through the white part as well. They look like price tags. What you're going to do is only put them in the iridescent tag where it's tacky, kind of like tape. I like putting the shorter end on the side that I want pulled more because it gives it more pull. Years of wearing it. You're going to move the hair out of the way. I'm going to apply this one closer to my eyebrow because I need more. Wicked, 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 wicked. Bitch, bitch. Who are you? Who are you? You. So you're gonna let that go for a moment. We are gonna grab the longer end. Now they have four circles, the ones that I use. When this is like a fresh pair, you cut, like I usually like to cut because unless you want like this much sticking out of the back of your head and you look weird, I would suggest you cut it once you've decided which tightness you are okay with. Now, I used to wear these like from the first tightness and my eyes were like, like too much where it was like pulling everything I had in my eye. And I realized that I like the more a little bit looser because it doesn't, I mean, it looks sick. It looks beautiful, but like it hurts. So this one, I'm gonna put a little bit lower and a little bit further away from my eyebrow. Look at it straight up now. Even though they're placed differently, they create symmetry. Don't you guys agree? This is what I would look like with it full throttle. I don't like it like this too much because then I lose what I was trying to do. I like it just like that on the loosest one. And it's kind of like buttoning a button in the back and you just leave it there. This is what I do fully before camera. That's what I always mean. I have my tapes on. So if you clock me, 
that's what the tape is for. This is how I put it on. And I honestly, I suggest everyone tries this because it just makes you feel like that bitch. I don't think that you should be trying it every single day or wearing it every single day. I'm gonna give you guys a little extra today and do my makeup for you guys as well. And today's makeup look is going to be a beat I want to practice. Like it's a cross between like two celebrity looks that I do, but I want it a little bit more natural because I need a look for Shayla's wedding that's coming up. And I've just been trying out different things and I'm gonna wear, I think, I believe it's yellow to the wedding. So I want to find something complimentary to the town, hence the background. So let's begin. I lied about the natural thing, like I totally lied. It's supposed to look like it's natural, but I'm faking it like that I'm naturally looking like that. This is like red carpet makeup, but I want it to look natural, if that makes any sense to any of you guys. I'm gonna go back to the Tula night cream, put it on the back of my hand. I'm gonna use D32 and DF2 from the Krylon palette. Now these are professional makeup artist palettes. I've told you guys about these before. Honestly, for those of you guys who have a kit, you need to get professional makeup. I know a lot of brands will be like, this is better and that's better and this is better. Nothing is better than professional makeup as a professional artist. It's just like the coloring and if you know how to manipulate it, it just, it's really beautiful. I mix that with the lotion. Look at how opaque that is and that was a little bit. It's like painting. I am going to place that there and up. Look at like how much product just on a brush. Everything will be linked down below if you guys need a brush or anything like that in the order that I'm using it. Notice how I still have not picked up on the product because you guys, the skin stuff that I have on is amazing. So pull it down there, create that. Keep it small, make my chin pop. Again, this is HD makeup. The reason why I like wearing HD makeup to events is because no matter who catches you, as we all know, a lot of our friends are gonna be there. So like cameras are gonna be out. So I wanna make sure my skin looks flawless. So picking up on D32, if you have dry skin, oily, if you're oily, I don't suggest you mix up this product with the moisturizer too much. If you have dry skin, this is like your safe haven. So contouring is the art of shade and illuminating, like creating things that you want the eye to see. So any place I place this tone, which is quote unquote the highlight, I expect it to look plumper. So don't place it anywhere. You don't want it to like stand out. The reason I placed it over here and, and that's like a neutral color that I put is going to be I want underneath my chin to be chiseled. Notice how these tones are different. This is lighter, this is darker. And now I'm gonna pull it in to my brow, just like that. For her wedding, I don't wanna do too much eyeshadow. I want like that perfect golden complexion with these Raquel lashes that I'm obsessed with because they elongate my eye and it's like fluttery but I don't want it to be about the eyeshadow too much. Now, we are gonna pick up on some more Tula, back of my head. I'm gonna make sure the brush is really saturated with it. I am going to pick up on D15. We're chiseling a chin and then up. Also, please do not forget, that is a trick. Look at the difference. Why do I mix it with moisturizer? Why Harouche, why Harouche? Because it thins out the product and it's easier to work with and blend. You guys see that? Forehead. My hair is just like sticking on to all the makeup. The plus side of professional makeup is that you get very, like it's thin, but it looks like a lot, but then it's like, doesn't show in person if that makes any sense to you guys. We are gonna go right here, like right above the hollow. Picking on an eyeshadow brush-ish, same color. I'm going to pull that out like that. Do you guys see the effect it's giving me? It's fun because I'll have this video to refer back to. Picking on a slimmer brush. I'm gonna go to D17 because it's a little bit more ashy because I want to create bone with my nose. And you all know I pull it up into my eyebrow around my lips. I'm gonna do the bottom lip on just the center and then the sides, I'm gonna keep it 
to my actual lip line. Fill it in on the edges and pull it in. And then using the darker color, I'm gonna make mine going down my lip over here. Enhance this, you're gonna kinda like make an anchor over here. So now I'm gonna go into the color D4 and that's what it looks like, the pink one. I am going to mix it again with the Tula. Pick up on D4, putting it on where I smile. This is the blush. I'm gonna do two swipes over here because where the sun hits it. A little bit over here on my lids. Still on the chin a tiny bit. Do I look pretty? I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna take a Sigma brush where I'm just gonna like buff in so there's no lines. So the color is flat. I'm not gonna change the shape of it. You guys, sometimes when you guys blend, y'all change the shape of it. Do not change the shape of it too much. Over here, I'm gonna touch it up. Over here, a little bit on my chin. My lip lines. Add a little bit more on my forehead. I'm gonna pick up a synthetic brush and just pat that in to my eyes. It looks hard, but I promise you guys, just follow me while I do it. Get ready with me and you will see how easy it is. You guys see that where there's like no eyeshadow? You're already giving yourself shadow to what it's supposed to look like. So the reason why I'm choosing to do it like this, again, because there's gonna be a lot of sunlight and I don't want like thickness of powders. I wanna cover it with creams. Then that up, go in here. I'm leaving this open right here because I'm gonna put gray. But the gray, I'm actually gonna use a powder. I've noticed when I put gray powder, it chisels more versus when I put gray cream. Correct me if you guys think another way, but like I know it's supposed to be done the way I was taught how to do it, where it's like a gray cream, but I just feel like when I use a gray powder, it's more substantial and it looks more like shadow because of the way it diffuses when it's a cream, it's like too plastered on. Just gonna wipe the back of my hand. Now, what the f are you gonna do? Harush. You're gonna use two shades of foundation. Two, not one. I'm gonna use 30C. I'm choosing Chanel because it's the lightest foundation. I want light coverage. I don't want heavy coverage. And then I'm gonna put 50N, which is neutral. So the contoured areas, you're gonna use the darker color. The highlighted areas, you're gonna use the lighter color in the foundation. Also, grabbing on NARS Honey in the Radiant Concealer, I am just going to very lightly neutralize the really bright spots underneath here with the honey. Believe it or not, the honey is darker than what I put on earlier. And it's kind of like a reverse, I don't know, color correcting, the best way to put it. I'm not gonna touch my under eyes first because I like to get it tacky. I'm gonna go in with the darker tone with the Sephora brush, and I'm gonna place it right where we didn't place anything, just down like that. I'm gonna also go down my neck. I know you guys are probably gonna say, what was the point of putting the lines there? There's a lot of points because in photographs and in person, you will see the definition. Now I'm going to make strokes like that up and I'll kind of allow it to go down like the residue of it can go down but that's it and I will cover up over here I want the darker colors to make my chin stand out I'm gonna place it on the contour close my eyes with the leftovers using this it cosmetic brush the smaller side I'm gonna go in with the lighter color and I'm gonna place it everywhere we place the highlight Using a clean brush, we are going to pat everything in there, starting with the lighter colors, obviously. When you do your makeup this way, I know it's like longer, more annoying, but in person, your skin ends up looking a lot more natural than when you bake. This method is amazing for anyone with older skin, more mature skin, and people that don't like baking a lot. Now, I'm gonna just clean that off on a paper towel. I'm gonna pick up on the darker tone and just like beat it into the brush, into the back of my hand. Picking up on the darker and the lighter tone on the smaller side, beating that in. I am just going to place foundation over my nose. I'm tapping it in. All you're doing is tapping that in. You're gonna get a flat brush that's clean. Go over that area just to pick up any leftover foundation before moving on to anything. Let's do our brows. I brush them down. I want a very natural vibe. Not really doing too much to my brows. I do want my brows to look very, very natural just because it is an outdoor wedding. 
so I don't want like that block brow vibe. I'm going to use Custard, a really thin brush. It's like almost like an eyeliner brush that I'm using versus a really thick brush and making that line like stand out like crazy. Literally, it's an eyeliner brush. It'll give you like that quick clean me up look without too much. So we're taking a smaller brush and blending that in. You guys, can you believe I have on just cream foundation, no setting, nothing. No bake, no powder, nothing. I'm going to go in with the NARS Orgasm blush because I'm going to double time. Put it in a circle over here. And I'm going to bring it up. I want that like tropically. That's why I actually dyed my hair darker because I want like that dark hair vibe on my eyes. Just a little bit over here. I'm going to hit the sides of my nose. And the reason why you're doing this is because you just want like that natural sun-kissed look right over here as well where the sun would kiss you. We're going to go a little bit under the eye that's how close we're getting with the concealer we're just gonna make sure that area looks clean one more time because we just put like blush everywhere clean beauty blender i'm just gonna pat the foundation in first it's really important to do the foundation first concealer and then blush and contour eyes for the powder i'm gonna use this is how much I use this, you guys. It's a Chanel powder. I'm gonna link it down below. You can use any pressed powder, but I don't know why I feel like I like using Chanel powders with the Chanel foundations. I think it's a better outcome. I am just going to place that very lightly, only in the areas where you would conceal. Like not like how you would bake, but literally just exactly where you would want your concealer. Also, I'm gonna go around my nose with this powder because we all know this area gets oily and only this much in the center because I get oily in between my brows. I'm gonna place the residue just like as a diffuser on my inner corners. Now I'm gonna use the Inglot powder. This is the translucent loose powder. This is literally one of the most finely milled powders you will ever, 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 ever find. Like you can put liquid over this one. So I literally need I use this so much, I need a new one. You can't even see it when I put it in my hands. I'm gonna pick it up with this brush, lightly place it. Very, very, very lightly place it. I'll place it underneath too. That's like a really little amount of powder put on, which is exactly what I want, because again, it is going to be sunny and I don't want the sun to play me. I am going to pick up on MAC Rose Gold Illuminator, the NARS SRB Illuminator, and the MAC Stroke Cream Gold Light Illuminator. Just be patient with me with the illuminators. Using the Strobe Light Gold, I am gonna place that on my inner corner and let that sit for a second because I need to get tacky. I'm gonna beat it to the back of my hand and I am gonna go a very thin line, not a heavy line as thin as an eyeliner underneath the brow with the same illuminator. Why am I doing this? Everyone's probably like, you can do it with eyeshadow. No, you can't. I want to go for a wet eye look. I'm going to go a little bit higher over here. It's the MAC Rose Gold. And I'm going to take off like any excess because with this, it separates if you leave too much on. I'm putting it in my hands. And with your fingers, dab it into place. You won't be able to get this effect with like literally anything else except for an illuminator. In the middle, I'm putting shade and illuminate. For eye makeup, all I'm doing is I'm gonna take the Urban Decay Perversion Liner. I'm gonna put it on my tight line. Then I'm gonna close it and just put it on my lid lightly, going in with an angle brush. You're just gonna like blur that in. <clears throat> I do not want like a perfect eyeliner moment. I want it to look like it's there, but not like perfect, perfectly the inner corners, just to make my eyes more slanty. I am just blending all of that into my eye. I'm going to pick up on just like a taupey nude shadow. That's like the only color I'm gonna place. And the same way we had the contour, we're just stamping it over. Like literally make a straight line, horizontal line across your lid. You guys see what I just did? Straight. 
I'm gonna put on my lashes. So I have on my lash, my lip. I only have a gloss in the center. I'm gonna link it down below the combo of my lips. So do you guys see how natural I wanted the eye? The reason why I opted for this again is because in person, this looks really pretty. It's not only like, you know how they say sometimes Instagram makeup or TikTok makeup is not for in person because to each their own, but some people look really crazy with all that makeup on. But this, you look really soft, flawless, natural. Now, I'm gonna finish off the look. It's a probiotic and superfood face mist, but it, if you guys can see the color over here, it's like kind of like an EB crystal. It gives like a glisten. Again, it's too rough. I've talked about this before. I'm gonna pick up on the color called Suede Powder. That's what it looks like. It's like more bone. I'm gonna pick up on this brush from Morphe. I'm just gonna lightly dab. That's what I mean when I say bone. See? Chiseled. You have to lightly do this because th there is no powder there. So the color grabs crazy. Mind you, there's no highlighter on, but it looks like I have highlighter because of the spray. Even my forehead started looking dewy once the first spray goes on now the key to this is seriously like shaking it you know those things those stupid workout things were like this before and it looks like you were someone else best of all shake weight tells you when your workout is finished by chiming and releasing a cool down spray so i close my eyes and i'm not going to get the rest of my face i just want the center of my forehead again because it just gives this like really cool glow like I do not have anything on and I know you guys can see it and it kind of almost makes it look like your face is oily but it's not you guys see that is it a reflection so I can't put that same reflection on my cheek too much because I'm gonna do a spray illuminator we are gonna go with the Patrick Ta spray it's called look at her white pearl again this is very consensual that you shake it Anything with a reflect in it, you gotta shake it. So with this, I'm gonna block it like that. You guys see that? It just makes your skin look like glass. Look at that. I'm gonna dry it before I move it around. And you have to angle this correctly or it'll seriously go everywhere. I want a little bit on my chin. What do you guys think of my look? Is it dewy and pretty? Or do you guys like it? the other way that i do it this to me looks really pretty and soft in person not aggressive i know like sometimes it looks good like cut 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 but this in person anytime i've done this makeup and somebody has seen me in person they're like you look so gentle you look so feminine i feel like especially if i'm going to be in the sun at an outdoor wedding with the sun beaming in my face i don't want to look like i have too much powder on and this is just like a practice run. Let me know if you guys like it. If you don't like it, it's okay to agree and disagree on this channel. Once again, thank you so much, Tula, for sponsoring yet another video. Don't forget to go to Tula.com and use code Harush for 15% off site-wide. Till next time, I'm going to leave you guys with this quote. Everything you can imagine is real. Once again, everything you can imagine is real if you depict everything in your head positive or negative it will be your reality if you have bad thoughts all the time you will manifest bad things if you have positive thoughts all the time you will manifest positive things and let me tell you something about you grimy ass treasure trolls out there when you keep wishing somebody ill, that shit hits you tenfold like a mirror, bitch. Like maybe someone might trip and fall because you put like eh, 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 bad energy, but like that's your realm. That's where you're living. You put out bad energy, you're going to receive it right back. So it makes sense why a lot of people that are haters are miserable. Everything you can imagine is real. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Till next time.